Good morning, Rescue House. It is an honor and a privilege to have you guys join us this morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Please join us as we worship this morning. You stood outside my grave with tears still on your face. And I heard you say my name. And my night was turned to day. You came. I knew that you would come. And you said Now I'm not afraid 
Hey moms. Hey moms. Hey moms. What is up Rescue House moms? Can I just be one of the first ones to say happy Mother's Day to you? Happy Mother's Day mamas. Happy Mother's Day. I just want to remind you that we do see you. We see you. We see you. We see you. We see you this Mother's Day. We see you new moms, step moms, single moms, foster moms, moms who have lost a child, and the woman who is begging God for one too. We're thinking of you this Mother's Day. We're praying for you. And we are so thankful for you. You are so loved and you are doing incredible during this season. I know that this is a hard season. A difficult season for you. Life is throwing curveballs left and right with this pandemic. Motherhood is hard. Some of you might be working from home. And maybe you're working a full-time job while trying to homeschool your kids now. Maybe you've lost your job during this season and you're just trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Maybe you feel like you're never gonna get a break. Maybe you just feel alone. That you feel like you are unheard, that nobody sees you, that maybe what you do is unimportant, or you feel forgotten. And I know this might feel like a tough season, but you're doing an awesome job. And we are so, so proud of you for sticking this out. You've put on a lot of different hats these last few weeks. And while it may have felt like things are falling apart, you haven't stopped trying. And that is so very strong. You are unique, you are special, and uh, you are a huge part of God's design uh, to raise your children. Your kids are gonna remember all the memories that you're making right now and all the time that they're getting to spend with you. Because you were there with them. You are an inspiration to me and you are an inspiration to so many others. I just want you to know that I look up to so many of you mothers. Seriously, just getting up each day um, and keeping your family and your kids alive and healthy, like that is a win. You are a warrior mom. You are making it happen. We are so thankful for you and we appreciate everything that you do. And you're a rock star. And I just want to read some scripture over you because this is you. This describes you. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done. And let her works bring her praise at the city gate. That's what God's word says about you. And that's what I believe to be true about you. So moms, we hope that you feel encouraged. Thank you for not giving up. Our families are stronger because of you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Happy Mother's 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 Day, Moms. Hey, happy Mother's Day and welcome to Rescue House Church. We are so glad that you are joining us on this very special Sunday. Hey, we recognize that Mother's Day looks a little bit different, us not being at church and everything, but that is okay because we're still gonna worship Jesus and we're gonna celebrate one of the best gifts that our Father has ever given to us and that is the gift of moms. If you're new here or this is your first time, we would love to know. From the Rescue House app, I just wanna encourage you to click on the new here tile. Let us know your name, uh, where you're from, where you're watching from, and if there's anything we can do to help you discover who God made you to be. We also want to invite you to follow our social media accounts on Facebook and Instagram for constant encouragement to stay up to date on all that we are doing. And don't forget to check out the Rescue House app as well. It's full of past messages, kid-friendly lessons for your family, and you can even request prayer. It's really like having Rescue House in your back pocket. Now before the message, we wanna share with you just one way that we were able to bless a local nonprofit here in the triad. It is Family Promise of Davie County. And this past week, Pastor Harry actually got to go out there and present them with a financial donation, and we wanted to show that to you, so check this out. It's pretty cool. We are en route to Family Promise of Davie County. Um, Family Promise, they target families that are facing or experiencing homelessness. 
and it, they specifically target families with children. Each week, uh, under normal circumstances, when COVID isn't around, um, they their families go stay at a different church. We are en route to their day center, which is currently serving as their home for the families. Um, we are en route there to uh, give them a little surprise and bless them with some uh, uh, financial contribution. This is y'all's new uh, weekly church operation. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> did y'all ever do that here before? Before you did anything? Having all of our families stay here? Yeah. Mm -mm. No, we, they were you know here during the daytime, but all of our families would stay in the evening. So from like 5.30 to 7 a.m. they would stay at our local churches. But now they're staying here. So we have one family staying upstairs and one family downstairs. Our, our weekend um, staff person, she's now working an extra eight hours during the week to focus solely on our graduate families during this whole crisis going on because a lot of them are, you know, they're experiencing crisis like everybody else. So um, we've increased our, you know, staff hours to that, which we're really excited about. We really believe in what you're well, doing you. with Family it. Promise and especially um, targeting families with children. So. Um, and, and you said you guys needed some financial assistance, so we just wanted to give you guys a check, and that's for three thousand um, dollars. And hopefully, that will be able to help you guys as you guys yeah, this is help awesome. and serve um, other families. Yeah. We anticipate in the next month, once you know, once um, our utility companies stop, um, like right now, you know, they have a hold on disconnections and mm -hmm. evictions are on hold, but yeah. those things will not be on hold forever. And so I think we're going to get a big influx in the next yeah. month or so. Yeah, well thank you, I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, 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 this. you're very welcome. Thank very you, welcome. thank Happy you. Wow, what an honor it is to be a small part of helping families get back on their feet. And I want you to know, because you give, you are making that possible. I also want to let you know that every dime that is given to our community is given in Jesus' name. So thank you, Rescue House, for staying generous during this time and allowing us to shine Jesus in our community. If you would like to make a monetary donation or give in any way, you can totally do that through the Rescue House app online at our website or you can actually give through the mail it really is simple and you can be a part of giving to our community by giving through the church now as we prepare for a word of God I got a cool surprise for you today I'm not gonna be bringing the word but my wife is gonna be bringing an incredible message that's right Lauren Hudson is preaching and I just want to encourage you to lean in today uh, to all that God would want to say to you through her. So right now I present my wife. She's going to bring the message to you, Lauren Hudson. Good morning, Rescue House, and welcome to Mother's Day Online. Thank you so much for tuning in with us and joining us on whatever platform you're using, whether it's YouTube, whether it's online, through the app, through Facebook. We're so glad that you are joining us today for Mother's Day at Rescue House. And before I go any farther into the message, I just wanna take a minute to say how proud I am of our church. These are unfamiliar times, unique situations and circumstances that we are all navigating through. We've never done ministry like this before, and I'm so proud to call Rescue House my home. I'm so proud of our leaders, our staff, and our pastor in the way that we are navigating these times. We've never done ministry like this before. We've never communicated like this before before. The generosity hasn't stopped. In fact, it's kept going. And we have been able to give away thousands of meals to families in need, thousands of dollars to other organizations in our community and be generous to them. And so thank you so much. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of our pastor, our staff, and our leaders during this time. We want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. We're so excited that you are joining us for Mother's Day today. And I want to say if you are a mom, if you are a grandma, if you are a daughter, whatever your position in life may be, we want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. 
We thank you for your commitment to loving those who God has entrusted to you, and we're so excited to celebrate you today. We honor you, we celebrate you, and we are so thankful for you. Happy Mother's Day, moms. As we think about Mother's Day and as I reflect on Mother's Day, I think about the blessing that it is and the gift that God has given us as moms. With that blessing and with that gift can also come stress and it comes responsibility, sometimes worry and anxiety. And so in this season, I really want to talk to you and share with you today what God has been teaching me through this season of motherhood that I've experienced like none other, what God has been revealing to me, what he has been teaching me, and if I'm being honest with you, what I am going to continue to work through as a mom. So what I want to talk to you about today and what I want to share with you is how God has been revealing his grace to me. And not just grace in the way that maybe we think about it automatically, but grace in the unexpected, grace in the ordinary, grace in the mundane, the everyday responsibilities that come with motherhood, that come with being a parent. Now don't tune out if you're not a mom, if you're not a parent, because I feel like the principles that God has been sharing with me and teaching me through are principles that you can apply to your life. Whatever your situation or circumstance may be, God has something that he wants to share with you today. So I would encourage you, whether you're a mom, whether you're a dad, a parent or not, I wanna encourage you to lean in and listen for what God wants to share with you today through my story, but apply it to your life. When I think about grace or when I say that word, I'm sure many of us have different interpretations or different images, different understandings of what grace is that come to our mind. What is grace? What is um, the grace of God? And how does that look? What does that look like in our lives? What does God's goodness look like? As I was growing up as a little girl, somewhere along the way, somebody shared with me this acronym of grace, and that is God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace is the goodness that you and I get. It's the goodness that God gives to us that we don't deserve, that we couldn't earn, and that Christ has paid the price for. Grace, it's the goodness of God in our lives. And we know from James 1, James 1, 17 says that all good and perfect gifts come from our Heavenly Father. I wanted to share this story with you um, about my kids and our family. And one experience of grace that we had, we have, Matt and I have been talking with our kids about grace and the principle of it and the goodness of God, the good things that God gives us that we don't deserve, that we couldn't earn. We had been talking about this as a family. Well, about eight months ago, we were at Chick-fil-A, our family. Um, If you know us, you know how much we love Chick-fil-A. It's our favorite restaurant to visit. We are regular supporters of Chick-fil-A. We're at Chick-fil-A, and if you order a kid's meal at Chick-fil-A, one thing that comes with that kid's meal is a prize, a toy, a book, some sort of toy or game that the kids get in their kid's meal. So at Chick-fil-A, one thing that you need to know is that prize and that toy that you get in your kid's meal, you can take that back up to the front back up to the register, the cashier, and you can turn it in for an ice cream cone. And they'll ask you the same question every time. Do you want it in a cup or do you want it in a cone? And so my boys had finished eating lunch and they had taken their little prize, whatever it was in their kid's meal that day, and they were going back up to the front to turn it in for an ice cream. And they'll give you either a cone with some vanilla ice cream or a cup with vanilla ice cream. The next thing I knew, my boys were running back across the restaurant barefoot because they had been playing in the playland, screaming at the top of their lungs, Miss Kelly gave us grace, Miss Kelly gave us grace. And at first, my first thought is, 
My kids are running through Chick-fil-A with no shoes on, screaming at the top of their lungs. We're probably going to get kicked out of this place. But my second thought was, what are they talking about? Miss Kelly gave us grace. They went to get ice cream. Well, my boys ran back to the table and in their ice cream, Miss Kelly, who has become one of our favorite people to visit at Chick-fil-A for obvious reasons, had loaded their ice cream up with chocolate syrup and sprinkles and whipped cream and a cherry. And their interpretation of grace is the extra stuff, the toppings on their ice cream that they didn't deserve, that they couldn't earn, but it was the goodness, the extra stuff that Miss Kelly was giving them. And so for some of us, I know that's kind of a silly story of my kids, a cute story of my kids, but it gives us an indication of grace. It gives us a good idea of the interpretation of what grace is, because I feel like for so many of us, we have a limited view. We have a partial view of what grace is. Maybe when you hear grace, you think about something in the past that has happened. Um, God's forgiveness, he forgave you of something, or a situation or a circumstance that God has brought you through, brought you out of, something that happened in the past that you received grace. Or maybe when you hear the word grace, you think about something that's going to happen in the future. You think about spending eternity with God in heaven. You think about the healing that is going to come or the promises that God is going to fulfill. If we think about grace in the past, we think about grace in the future, those aren't necessarily wrong, but they're just limited. Because I'm here today to share with you and encourage you in God's grace is here for us today. It's here in the present. It's here in the here and now. Even in the everyday, the ordinary, the unexpected day-to-day -day life, God's grace is evident to us. Or maybe we view grace as we can see it in the present, but we only see it when life is good or things seem easy, things are going our way. I want to encourage you that even when that's not the case, we can find God's grace and we can find God's goodness in the present. What about when it's not necessarily going our way or just seems like Groundhog Day and we're living the same day over and over again? We're having the same parenting conversations. We're disciplining our kids over the same things over and over again. We're cleaning up the same messes and um, having the same conversations. I want to encourage you that I have felt like that a lot lately. As many of you probably have too, in this season of quarantine, it's hard to be stuck in a house with three kids who are loud and going crazy all the time and not having a lot of places to go to escape, to get some energy out. I understand that and I want to encourage you that there are ways to find God's grace in those seasons. That's exactly what God has been teaching me lately that I want to share with you. Where are the sprinkles? Where is the whipped cream, the chocolate syrup, the cherry in our everyday, our ordinary, mundane lives? So I want to share with you today three principles of grace that God has been teaching me, that he's been revealing to me, and that I have been learning with him. The first thing I want to share with you is that you and I, we are not just recipients of grace, but we are instruments of it. We are not just recipients of grace, something to receive, but you and I, we are instruments of grace. How often are we missing out on God's grace because we are waiting for something to happen to us or we're waiting for something to happen for us when God has called us to be the grace. He's working grace out in and through us. We find ourselves asking God to give us joy when he has given us a spirit of joy. He's called us to be the joy or maybe you're asking and you're searching for some peace in your life. I want to encourage you that God's grace is that he has given you the peace. He's giving you peace. 
I find myself often as a parent asking my kids in moments of discipline or correction or teaching, I find myself often asking my kids, do you understand me, but how often are we getting on their level? Are we asking our kids or trying to understand them? The cool thing about grace is knowing that as the leader of our homes, we get to set the tone. We get to set the temperature of our homes. And I'm not talking about hot or cold. I'm talking about, do we have an atmosphere? Are we setting an atmosphere of love? Are we exemplifying forgiveness? Are we showing and telling our kids what it looks like to be generous? Are we giving them examples of God's goodness in their lives? Are we being the grace that God has called us to? As followers of Jesus, as Christians, one of the main things that we are asked to do is be ambassadors for Christ. And being an ambassador for somebody, being an ambassador of God means that we are His representative. And our mission is the same mission that Christ gave the disciples. In Matthew 28, it says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. If we're going to be ambassadors for grace, if we're going to be ambassadors for Christ, it's got to start in our homes first. In all of life situations, whether you're a parent or not, we can be ambassadors wherever we go. God's called us to do that, to share the good news, to make disciples, to be His grace. The cool thing about being an ambassador for Christ, being an ambassador for God, is that we get to be His representatives. And not just representatives of His authority, yes, that's part of it, but also representatives of His grace. We've been put in the position that we are in to declare and proclaim the goodness of God. I love the way that the message version reads this next passage. It's 1 Peter 2, 9, and the message version says, But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do His work and speak out for Him, to tell others of the night and day difference he has made for you from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. This priestly work, this ambassadorship that we have been called to is a high calling. It's a gift that God has given us. And the good news is that God is allowing us to be a part of his redemption redemption story. And we have the greatest influence on those that we are closest to, our family, our children, our spouses. If you're not a parent, your coworkers, your family, your friends, whoever it is that you are closest to, you have an opportunity to be his ambassador. And I wanna encourage you parents, you moms of adult children, that this doesn't just stop. Your influence doesn't just stop when your kids move out of the house when they become adults. I know for me as an adult, my parents' influence is on me strong every day. Every week I'm thinking about them. Grace is not just something that we receive from God, but it's something that we participate in with Him. So are we showing others grace? Are we pointing out the grace of God to our children as moms? Are we verbalizing the goodness of God? And I want to stop for a second because I know that some of the things I'm saying can seem kind of fluffy and maybe it's easier said than done. And you're thinking, well, what about my kid who's struggling? What about my family who is going through a difficult time? What if the everyday is weighing us down and it's getting in the way of our relationships? I want to encourage you that God doesn't give us an assignment without giving us the tools and the resources to work through it. God's word is powerful and effective. And maybe you have a kid who is struggling with authority or struggling with disobedience. I wanna encourage you to speak God's truths over them. Jesus even didn't come to be served, but to serve others. 
Maybe you have a daughter or a son who is struggling with self-image issues or body issues. You can speak God's word into their lives. Encourage them that they were fearfully and wonderfully made, knit together in their mother's womb, and that God loves them. He is more focused on the inside than the outside. Whatever it is that our families are going through, the seasons that our children are dealing with, we can speak God's grace into them. Grace is knowing that God allows broken people to shape, mold, and to encourage and restore broken people. I love that quote by Andy Stanley where he says, you may have heard it before, but he says, your greatest contribution to the kingdom of God may not be something that you do, but someone that you raise. And I believe that that is true for us today. There's grace to be found in the everyday, the mundane, the ordinary, unexpected moments of parenting, the unexpected moments of motherhood. And if you're not a mom, the unexpected moments of life. As we close out this first point, I just want to encourage you that maybe instead of viewing our children's weaknesses, viewing our children's sin or their disobedience as things that we need to be saved from, and instead viewed those as the very reason that we have been called to parenting. And it's an opportunity to extend grace because we are not just recipients of grace, but we are instruments of it. The second thing that God has been teaching me is that grace reminds us that we are the ones who need it the most. Grace reminds us that you and I as moms, you and I as parents, You and I in this life, no matter what your situation is, we are the ones who need grace the most. The fact that I struggle to give the same thing that I need is an indication that God is not done with me, that he's still working on me. I am still a work in progress. I want to share with you an illustration that was shared with me um, using a water bottle. So I'm going to take this water bottle and... I wonder what happens, and I would love to have a little bit of audience participation here, but if I take this water bottle and I just shake it a little bit, or maybe I squeeze it, what happens, right? The water comes out of the water bottle. And if you were here with me today, I would love to ask you this question, but the question is, why is water coming out of the water bottle. I think for many of us, the obvious and a logical answer would be, well, Lauren, water is coming out of the water bottle because you're shaking it, because you're squeezing it, and so water is going to come out. And that is a logical answer, a logical explanation for that, but what I wanna challenge us with today is, what if the reason water is coming out of the water bottle is because water is what's inside of the water bottle. You see, if I had a glass of milk or a soda bottle instead, and I shook that soda bottle and I squeezed that soda bottle, water would never come out because that's not what's inside. And the same thing is true for us in seasons of parenting and situations of life where we feel shaken, we feel squeezed, we feel like pressures of the world are coming in on us, I want to encourage you that those are not the reasons water is coming out. It's what's inside that's going to come out. When situations arise that test us and um, shake us and we feel like it's chaotic and it's out of control, what is inside of us is what's going to come out. I want to encourage you that Maybe the biggest problem in our parenting is not our children, but it's what's inside of us. It's me and it's you. We had a funny example of this just a couple weeks ago. Our family during this quarantine, we really enjoy going to Tanglewood. And if you're not familiar, Tanglewood is a big recreational park in the area. So we're at Tanglewood and we really enjoy riding our bikes and walking around the track there. So we're, we're doing that as a family one day and Matt and I noticed that the boys have gotten a little bit farther up ahead of us 
and they stop at a corner and we realize that they're stopping and they have started making fun of somebody else who is sitting on a bench nearby. And so for us in that moment, what is our instinct? What is our initial reaction to respond as a mom to my children who are not doing what they should be doing or are acting a way that they shouldn't be acting? What's inside of me is what's going to come out of me. And yes, of course, that situation is a teachable moment for my children. And we got to talk through um, compassion and kindness and um, discipline them accordingly. But the bigger teachable moment was, what's my reaction to my children? What comes out of me? What comes out of my mouth when they are not acting a certain way or doing what they should be doing? I want to share a quote with you from a book that I read recently. It's called Parenting by Paul David Tripp. And he says this, hang with me because it's kind of long, but I promise it's worth it. My biggest ongoing problem as a parent is not my children. It's me. My children don't cause me to do and say what I do and say. No, the cause of my actions is found inside of my own heart. My children are simply the occasion where my heart reveals itself in words and actions. So I need much more than rescue and relief from my children. I need rescue from me. This is why Jesus came, to provide us with the rescue that we all need, but we cannot provide for ourselves. When you are willing to confess that you're the biggest problem in your parenting, you are on the road to very good things in you and in your work with your kids. God hasn't just called us to do his work in the lives of our children, but I believe that God wants to use the lives of our children to advance his work in us. We all need grace. And it's a reminder that the very thing we need to extend to others is also what we need from God. So I wanna challenge you just as I have been challenging myself, are we living by the Spirit? Are we producing the fruits that the Holy Spirit provides? Galatians explains to us that the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have been crucified, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step by the Spirit. The good news is that God's not calling us to be perfect. None of us ever will be, but He has provided His Spirit for us to use and to utilize. And we can See if we are producing those fruits. Are the fruits the first thing that come out? Are they our initial response to our children? This all kind of leads me to point number three. My last point is that grace promises to make heavy burdens light. Grace promises to make heavy burdens light. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 says, Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I don't know, moms, if you are anything like me, but I tend to like to control things. I like to control situations and Um, I like to control where my kids are, what my kids are doing, or what we're doing as a family. I tend to be a control freak, and Matt will tell you that when it comes to giving others permission to make decisions, I often want them and expect them to make the decisions that I would have them make. As a controller, one thing that happens when life seems out of control, when life seems chaotic, when things aren't going our way and there's surprises along the way is that I start to feel stressed. I start to feel burdened. I start to carry the weight in my shoulders. But we are promised the good news, the grace 
is that God promises to make those heavy burdens light when we will surrender our will to His will. Are we willing to surrender our expectations for His expectations? Are we willing to surrender control over situations and circumstances to Him? Because He promises that when we're yoked together, when we're a team together with Him, the stronger will lead the way and take the burden off of us. I want to encourage you that if you're feeling weary, if you're feeling burdened, if you're feeling stressed out from the everyday life of parenting, of disciplining, of caring for your children, to surrender to God. Where's the first place that we go to get our confidence? Are we turning to social media? Are we turning to Facebook and Instagram? Or are we looking for the promises of God in His Word? I can tell you this assuredly, that God loves your children more than you. And He loved them first. So allow Him to help you carry the burden. James 4, 6 through 10 says, But He gives greater grace. Therefore, He says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Are we willing to humble ourselves before the Lord and allow him to take the heavy burden of everyday life off of our shoulders? I want to remind you of the three principles, the three areas of grace that I shared with you, and then I want to close out with one more scripture. The first thing that grace does is it reminds us that we are not just recipients receiving grace, but we are instruments of it. Grace reminds us that we are the ones who need it the most. We're all works in progress. And then finally, grace promises to make the heavy burdens of this light light. I want to encourage you um, and close out with this last scripture. I feel like it just encompasses everything that I wanted to say so well. And it's exactly what I want to encourage you and challenge you with this morning. This is from Romans 12, 1 and 2, the message version. So here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. Are you ready? God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings out the best of you and develops well-formed maturity in you. Embracing what God wants to do for you is the best thing that you can do for him. And when we fix our attention on him, when we fix our eyes on him, we will be changed from the inside out. Let's respond to him and let him bring the best out of us. As we close today, I would love to just pray for you, pray for the moms that are tuning in, pray for the parents who are tuning in today, and everyone, whether you're a parent or not, I pray that this message spoke to you and encouraged you in a different way to experience grace in the unexpected. God, we just come to you this morning thanking you for our moms, thanking you for Mother's Day to celebrate them, to honor them, to love them. God, I pray that all of the moms who are tuning in, would you just wrap your loving arms around them and comfort them in the way that only you can. God, we love you and we pray that you would continue revealing your grace to us, grace in the unexpected, in the ordinary, God, we praise you for the ways that you have already given us grace. We look to the past, we look to the future, and we look to the present, and we are so thankful that you have invited us in to your redemption story. Ultimately, we are thankful for Jesus, and it's in his name we pray, amen.
Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today on this Mother's Day. We want to wish you all a happy Mother's Day. We love you. Don't leave just yet. We have one more special announcement for you, and we'll see you next week. Have a great day. Hey moms, I hope that message was so encouraging for you and your families. We wanna let you know that we love you and that we are here for you. As we close out our Mother's Day experience today, we get an opportunity to do something pretty cool and give away this awesome gift baskets to one of our Rescue House moms out there. We have a great study Bible, a journal, and a lot of other items to treat yourself this Mother's Day. And here's what you need to do for your chance to win it. If you don't already have the Rescue House app, download it right now. And when you download it, click on the Mother's Day tile giveaway. There you can either enter yourself or better yet, you can actually have your husband or your kids do it for you. Fill that out, all the information, and in just one hour, we're gonna randomly choose one mom to win this Mother's Day gift basket. You only have until noon today, May 10th. So go ahead, register for your chance to win it now. And I wanna encourage everybody who's watching to join us back here next week as we continue uh, giving you content from God's word and as we continue to live out all that God would have us. Now go be who God made you to be.